David Maraga, the president of the Supreme Court of Kenya, has made history once again. David Maraga was the first chief justice to nullify a presidential election in Africa. And yesterday, David Maraga advised President Uhuru Mege Kenyatta to dissolve parliament for failure to enact the two-third gender rule in this country. That move by David Maraga has caused a huge storm in this country. I want us to look at I want us to look at the political implications of that move by David Maraga to advise President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta to dissolve parliament. But before you do that, if you are watching this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Let me just read for you the advice by David Maraga. David Maraga is saying, let me read it. For over nine years now, Parliament has not enacted the legislations required to implement the two-third gender rule, which, as Court of Appeal observed, is a clear testimony of Parliament like a dasical attitude and conduct on this matter. Consequently, it is my constitutional duty to advise Your Excellency to dissolve Parliament under Article 261.7 of the Constitution. Now let us go to that Article 261.7 of the Constitution. What it says. The article says, If Parliament fails to enact legislations in accordance with an order under Article 6b, the Chief Justice shall advise the President to dissolve Parliament. I want you to understand that shall advise the president to dissolve parliament and the president shall dissolve parliament so after advising him the president has no option the president shall dissolve parliament so which means on this matter president uru kenyatta doesn't have options he must dissolve parliament all members of parliament must go home But the only challenge which I'm seeing in, in, in this ruling is that there's no clear timelines when the president should do this. The president can decide to delay this and say dissolve parliament towards the end of the term. And again, the constitution envisages a situation where everything is done within a reasonable time. And that's why Nelson Harvey was actually saying that the president must dissolve parliament within 21 days. But that's not nowhere in our constitution. But based on Maraga's letter, the president has two options. The first option which the president has is actually to go back to high court. Because the, the, the Supreme Court cannot deal with this matter. So the president must go back to the, Supreme, to the high court and even the parliament speaker can go to high court to interpret that law but remember high court has always pronounced itself on this matter severally and they've always insisted that parliament must enact these laws so basically they can go there to mark time number two of course they can go there to mark time and also try to get the interpre interpretation of the term shall because that shall is actually causing a lot of, of, of confusion i was reading lawyers arguing over the term shall that probably the term may actually mean may and not shall. So they can go to high court to seek interpretation of that. So that when it may, then it will mean the president is not obligated to dissolve parliament. So that's the first option can, they can do to go to court. Number two, two is the president can decide to delay to dissolve parliament. And that will mean he can wait until three months to the next general election. And then say now I've dissolved parliament because of that order. But that will amount to impunity. I don't think the president would want to be judged as one person who entrenched impunity in this country. And of course the president has the history of disregarding court orders in this country. But as our thing stands today, there's no option. The president must dissolve parliament. All members of parliament must go home. And in fact there has been this discussion whether... When the parliament is dissolved, 
we are going to go for a general election or a budget election. There's a general consensus that we are going to, we are going to go for a budget election because the general election is well stipulated in our constitution. The constitution is very clear that we can only have general election in the month of August, the second Tuesday of the month of August every five years. So it means after every five years, then the second month, the second Tuesday, that's the time we are supposed to have general election. So the time for general election is actually well stipulated. So it means we are going to send all these members of parliament home. Once we send them home, we are going to go for a, a by-election. And the new members of parliament are not going to serve five years. They are only going to serve until the second Tuesday of August of uh, the general election. But what, what next? Assuming we go for a by-election, then we elect new members of parliament. And I'm, I'm going to try and explain how that process of election is supposed to be conducted. Assuming we go for an election, and then we elect new members of parliament. What next? The constitution says if parliament has been dissolved under article 7, the new parliament shall enact the required legislations within the period specified in the fifth schedule, beginning with the date of the commencement of the term of the new parliament. So it means once they, they are sworn in, then this new parliament must embark on a journey of implementing this same same law so if you go for an election and then ultimately you don't elect women or you elect more men more women and fail to elect men then you are still going to have the same problem what happens if you have the same problem if they fail to enact because they might still experience the same problem what will happen if they fail the constitution says if the new parliament fails to enact legislations in accordance with the clause 8 the provisions of the clauses 1 to 8 shall apply, which means they are also going to be dissolved and they are going to go home. So basically, we are in a political crisis in this country. The parliament, as at today, and lawyer Otienda Molo stated it very clearly, cannot transact. It's not properly constitu constituted. The Supreme Court, through Chief Justice Maraga, has stated clearly that the parliament has failed to enact the legislation. So they must be this, it must be dissolved. But politically, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means so many things. And one of the areas which is being affected is the IBC. How are we going to go for our next election if the current parliament is not properly constituted? It means they can't appoint new commissioners. They can't even appropriate money to conduct that particular election. So we are in a huge crisis in this country. And Maraga alluded to that fact. But let's now get to politics. I've, I've, I've seen two different school of thoughts. The first school of thought is on the Building Bridges Initiative. Because, the, because Parliament is not properly constituted, there are people who are now saying that marks the end of the Building Bridges Initiative. Because Parliament can be used now to pass that legislation and even the building bridges initiative which is which can be done but then someone can still go to court and then the court will still declare that law that building bridges initiative unconstitutional what will you do you will do nothing so that's the first thing i'm i'm seeing here people are saying that it actually marks the end of the building bridges initiative that reggae has been stopped. I don't know whether you also share the same thought. I want to know whether you share the thought that this, this ruling by Justice Maraga actually marks the end of the Building Bridges Initiative. On where I, from where I stand, I strongly believe that Building Bridges Initiative can only happen if Parliament will enact the law. That's number one. And because Parliament is now not properly constituted, it can't enact that law. Number two, for BBI to happen, we must have IBC, which means now we don't have IBC. It's not properly constituted. They need money to be appropriated. If parliament is not properly constituted, it means someone can easily go to court and the courts will throw 
that building bridges initiative document. So there's a school of thought which believes so. The second school of thought is the school which believes that President Ruki Nyata has been handed a loaded gun now. Akuna research. So it's now he can now hold MPs hostage. And they are saying that the president can now decide to delay sending the MPs home or he can actually go ahead and send the MPs home immediately. He comes back from Mombasa. He can decide to come back here to, to Nairobi, call a press conference, send all members of parliament home. Once that's done, then the president can now call for a fresh for a fresh elections. And is then going to use that fresh elections to send home or to get rid of all members of parliament who are giving him trouble. The same with Raila Moludinga. They can then now ensure, because he's, the president will still be in power. By the way, this ruling does not affect the president. It does not affect the cabinet. It does not affect his executive. Because even the Supreme Court is not meeting this requirement. But the only thing is, nobody has gone to court to dissolve the Supreme Court, for example. <laughs> but now, the president and Raila Odinga can decide now, let's dissolve parliament. Once they dissolve parliament, all troublesome members of parliament are going to be kicked out. So you go to Kwale, Kilifi, the likes of Aisha Joma, Wanaenda Nyumbani. Guru Kenyatta will make sure the likes of Ali Swahome, Wameenda, Dindi Nyoro, Wameenda, he sorts Moses Kuria, then a new team will come. And once new team is in place, then this new team is now going to implement the Building Bridges Initiative. So they are going to propose that for us to, to deal with this uh, with this uh, gender, true third gender rule, we are going to deal with it through a constitutional amendment. Because if you followed the tweets by Kepchuma Murkomen, he's actually not blaming parliament for the failure. Because these things are supposed to be constitutional amendments. So this team can then decide to make amendments to the constitution through parliament. Even change the reading and the meaning of that two third gender rule. And then they'll use, because they now have the numbers, they shall have kicked out the troublesome members, they now have the numbers to pass the Building Bridges Initiative in Parliament. Nothing will stop them. They can still do that because what Uru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga needs is just to pass the Building Bridges Initiative before the next elections. And that takes us to what the Constitution says about this election. It's actually a by-election. What's supposed to happen is that once the president now dissolves this parliament, the speaker of the National Assembly will have 21 days to declare all those seats vacant. He will declare the seats vacant and then inform IBC within 21 days that parliament, we don't have any member of parliament. So IBC will then conduct elections within 90 days. So which means within 90 days, elections shall have been held. So which means if the president can uh, dissolve parliament next week, probably we'll have election either in January or February latest. So by February, we'll have new members of parliament ready to execute what the president wants. The president will ensure in central Kenya, his new members come. Of course, even if, he, if a new team will not come, some will come and they'll be able because the president is still in power and I'm sure if elections will be held and the president Raila Odinga will be attempting to kick out allies of the duty president, the duty president will not, will not agree. He will resist. So he will campaign for his people. And some of those people will come to parliament. And some will not come to parliament. So we are going to have a situation where we are going to have new parliament legislating on this particular matter. And as part of the the, 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 the campaign or, or as part of the bargain, they'll also be there with the Building Bridges Initiative. They'll be told that for us to, to solve this gender issue, let's pass it through a legislation, through constitutional amendment in parliament. So BBI will easily pass. So there's those two thoughts. But I agree with all of them. The first one is that parliament as currently constituted is not properly constituted and cannot transact business. But the president can use this occasion to dissolve parliament, bring new members, and use them to pass the Building Bridges Initiative.
and that's the way I'm looking at it. I don't know your thoughts. And I want to ask you a question, a very honest question. Do you think this country can actually pass the gender role based on our cultures and the rest? There are several countries. Countries, Ethiopia has done it. Uh, Rwanda has done it. And in Rwanda, they are saying it was possible because after the genocide, most members of, uh, most, many people who remained were actually women. So women started participating in politics actively. So they were able to achieve it. But what about this country? Can we achieve it? I want you to get me that opinion. Because as we speak, judiciary has not complied with that rule. Forget about members of parliament. How many county assemblies can meet this particular requirement? How many county assemblies? So basically, this country, today, we are in a crisis, a constitutional crisis. And that's why James Orengo termed it a constitutional moment. I want to hear your, mom, your thoughts on this matter. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day.